This is ITV News at 6.30 with Alistair Stewart and Julie Etchingham. Good evening. ITV News has secured exclusive video from hospitals on Syria's front line. Barely able to save life, barely able to function. Children lie starving and dying. Medicines that could cure them in dwindling short supply. Doctors pledge to save life themselves the daily targets of snipers. This evening the UN Security Council meets to discuss the resolution on President Assad and his chemical arsenal but their talk is little use to those besieged in Homs and Damascus still suffering the onslaught of his conventional weapons. Our correspondent John Ray has this exclusive report. Just 14 months old hers is a fragile life fading and failing. There are no bullets or bomb wounds for doctors to tend, but no reason for hope either. Within a day, it is starvation that will end Rana Obeid's life. In the Damascus suburb of Al Moadamir, they say the lucky can choose their fate. Much better to be killed quickly than to die slowly. But for these children, there is no choice. Their fate sealed in a makeshift clinic under siege for 10 months. Aid convoys cannot get through. Malnutrition has become a killer. The doctor caring for these children tells us we urgently need baby milk or more will die. And this is the view outside the hospital? In Homs, the destruction of these rebel hell streets is complete. But somehow, a handful of doctors struggle on. The entrance of the hospital is uh, controlled by snipers here. So we make another hole in the wall just to take the patients. Dr. Mossab Al Homzi has filmed for us this disturbing dispatch from his front line. Yourself, or by carrying any patients or injured people, you should go through these tunnels and run very quickly. So you can just try to protect yourself. This is the way that we cross with our patients here, operating room. We enter an underground world where they operate without clean water and where food and medical stocks are dwindling. Still we have some medication, but most of it is out of date and we were preparing for, should be thrown out, you see here. But we should use it because we don't have another choice. This for example, expired in 2012, and we, till now we give it as antibiotics. Here is a young boy who is assisting us. His assistant is a boy barely in his teens. Most of the trained medical staff have long fled or been killed. But they, they are doing their best to keep controlling and keep helping for the patients. Dr. Mosab recorded this attack on a hospital last year. Both regime and rebels have been accused of making doctors and patients deliberate targets of terror. <laughs> One of the few functioning clinics before and then after it was visited by the Syrian Air Force. Here, Talat Tatasi had often operated. He is among a group of Syrians based in the UK who travel back to their home country where their skills are desperately needed. I would say the medical care in Syria now is a brink of collapse. They don't have fluids to give the patient. They give direct blood transfusion without any blood test. Uh, they lose patient few days after what they think successful surgery because they can't give them the post care. They can't give them the food and they can't give them medication. In Damascus, not far from where this girl lies, there are aid workers with food and medicines. But agonizingly, they are the wrong side of government lines no one can cross. A distance of less than a mile, the difference between life and death. 
John, what, if anything, can be done to help the doctors and those victims? Well, the brutal fact, Alistair, is that both sides in this conflict are blocking aid. Uh, both sides are using the deprivation of medical facilities as a weapon for war. Nobody is sticking to the rules of war. And it's those who cannot help themselves, the, the, the old, uh, the poor, and the young who are suffering most. At that clinic in Damascus, doctors there say that all they have to give those starving children is the water uh, that they've got from boiling a few dried figs. In terms of the solution, you've heard of this idea of humanitarian corridors, essentially safe routes to drive these aid convoys through. Big problem with that, of course, it would be policing troops on the ground. That would require a UN uh, resolution. Um, never say never, uh, three weeks ago, who'd have thought we'd have been talking about a chemical weapons resolution at the, the UN? But at the moment, it's not on the Security Council agenda, and the need is absolutely urgent. John, thank you. And on our website, you can see more of that video taken by the doctor in Homs, and you can also find out how you can help the Disasters Emergency Committee appeal on Syria. It's emerged.